Greetings salutations, it's me James will be a sensei back with another power query tutorial in today's video We're gonna be doing something rather excellent We are gonna take a list of stocks purchased throughout the year in 2023 on different days with specific amounts What, what I want to do is I want to identify all the stocks that were cons that was consistently Purchased over a 12 month period. So here you can see these three stocks were purchased every single month But if we also want to check stocks that were only purchased in three months in this range say Cool, there we go. So we're gonna be using a lot of list functions in this one. So let me show you how to do it. All right, so you select the data, you go to data, you go to from table or range, and this will pull it into Power Query. The very first thing I want to do is, we go to transform and say group by. So we say advanced, we wanna group it by the stock. We wanna do account uh, all rows, and I'm gonna add an aggregation just to say, sum and let's say let's call this one total and that's of the actual amount and we say okay and that basically groups it for us nicely you can see all of the stocks so you have a unique row for each stock and then within there it gives you the table details of all the months it was purchased in so let's quickly look at what we created here in terms of the group function you can see um, in this function where we do the the all table or the all rows you can basically delete all of this stuff. That's just sugar syntax, just to make it a bit simpler for what we're gonna do. And we say, okay, say, okay. And that returns the same data set, just easier to read. Now, the, now what I wanna do is you can see this actually, this count column now returns basically a table with all three columns. I don't want that, I just want the dates. So you can see, if we, let's quickly take apart this function, shift and enter, all right? And shift and enter there. So you can see the count, which is this column over here, is basically the table, right? And then the total is basically just the sum over there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in here is, and in this count column there, I just want to get the dates out of there and I wanna create a list. So what I'm gonna do is in square brackets, just select that date over there in square brackets and check what happens. If I press enter, it's now returning a list in there and it's only returning the dates in which that stock um, was purchased, right? I want to isolate out of this date range just the month because I know this is on 2023. So what I can do there is I go to, we're going to take this list and we want to transform this list into a month. So what I'm going to use is list transform in curly bracket. I have the date. Yes, that is the list. Transform the date to date month, right? And I'm going to press enter. And now if we look at it, you can see it's basically only lists the months. All right. And you can see in the Facebook, we got some duplicate months. You can see Facebook was purchased three times in the month of January, but we want that just to be only one. All right. So what do we do there? So we want to have a distinct list of that. So what we do is now we go on top of that function, we say list distinct, correct? And say, okay. And now what you'll have is, if we look at Facebook again, now you have a distinct list of months in which the stock was purchased. Now what I want to do is, now that I know the number of months, I just want to do a simple count of the items in this list. So now I'm going to add to this and I'm going to use list count and encapsulate all of that in some brackets and say, okay, there we go. Now you can see um, for each stock and how many months did the stock appear, All right? Pretty cool. So the next step is quite, quite easy. What you could do is you could add a step and just go like count where number filter is equal to 12 and that is your answer, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how to use a specific function because I want to reduce the number of steps I have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say table select rows. And what you need to do is you need to give this function a table and this is actually a table right this whole function because it gives us this table what i want to say is each and i want to refer to this column over there count uh, is equal to 12 and just close the bracket out and there we go pretty much done this is how you would do it so you can see we basically did it all in one function so now we know all the stocks that appeared all the stock that was basically purchased consistently through the 12 months within a year. Okay, but I wanna make it a little bit dynamic. All right, so I'm gonna bring this back. So close and load, close and load it to 
over there. So, okay. So, okay. So, there we go. That's what we're going to do. All right. So, what I want to do is I want to have this perimeter table over there and then feed that to find stocks that appear, let's say, in three months or stocks that appear in six months and then 12 months. But what I need to do is I need to pull this table into Power Grid. So, select the table, go to data, front table, arrange, pull it in. And let's rename this to perimeter. So, this query is called perimeter and you can see the uh, a column is called months. So in there, I go back to my original query to go open the advanced editor. Simply this hard coded value over there, just refer to perimeter, right? And then in curly brackets, what was the was months? And then we need to refer to what row in there. So we start counting at row in curly brackets zero. That's the first row of data. There you go. So that actually works. We say cool, load it, load it. Okay. So now let's say three months and refresh. Now we have the three months, four months, refresh, nothing, six months, refresh, and then back to our normal 12 months, let's say refresh, and there we go. I think two months has quite a bit, let's say two months, there we go. Well, I hope that opened your eyes to the possibilities, what you can achieve just by understanding list functions a little bit more in detail. What can you do with a list? Once you understand list functions, you can come up with some pretty amazing solutions. Not for tonight, BA Sensei signing out.